support our startups. Oh, Got a lot of love in the group chat. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. And so we'll have a bit more time. Also, if your question wasn't answered and we've captured these questions at the end of the session, as I mentioned, all of our speakers and guests will be um, around for the Q&A. So hold on tight. But in the meantime, I'm going to introduce our next um, amazing speaker, Ben Richardson, who's just joined us. So he's going to be spotlighting um, product. Um, so Ben is a serial entrepreneur and has a wealth of experience from across the entire spectrum. Um, he's also re more recently founded um, a startup lab called Equinox Labs, and he's gonna give us a bit of a sneak peek and kind of deep dive into the back end and dissect the back end um, of his latest startup with us in this session. Um, so Ben, I think, can I see you on the screen? Hello. There you are. Oh, we haven't seen each other for ages. I like your hair. Oh, well, yeah, so a bit of context about that. A lot, Melbourne is in a, a lockdown. We've been in lockdown for about six six months. It's like we've got curfews, you can't leave the house, there's no hairdressers, so. That's <laughs> this, right, you're rocking it. This you're is what happens. <laughs> 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 I haven't had hair this long in like a decade and a half since I was in school. <laughs> oh, welcome, uh, welcome. It's so glad you could be here to join us and really excited about your session on product. Um, so we're going to, uh, I'll hand over to you. So feel free to sh uh, share your screen if you like. Um, and we'll call, and at the end of 15 minutes, we'll have a bit of a Q&A together. No worries. How's that looking? That looks great. Uh, and present. Is that still looking good? Yep. Perfect. Excellent. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, so Song, Song you asked me to, to kind of do a bit of a deep dive on product and, um, and it's, it's a lot to cover in 15 minutes. Um, so I, this is a pretty much a combination of, um, a little bit about my background and all of the kind of a collection of I guess the compound learnings I've had over the last decade of, of building kind of pro commercial grade products um, into my latest venture. So a little bit about um, my background. So I've done a lot of stuff. I've sold two businesses to date. I um, co-founded and ran the PwC SaaS Ventures division, which was the first globally that ever done where we built SaaS products that took, took our services direct to market. Um, Bottom left, that's me with the Prime Minister, where I like manage the federal health um, project um, uh, by a private entity. Uh, I was, I was a, that was a very strange experience. I did not know how to shake him. I went to like give him a hug, and he's like, "Put it here, <laughs> don't hug me." <laughs> um, so yeah, I've been around the block, um, and so um, today I'm going to kind of run through a couple of top level items. I'm going to approach this from a perspective of uh how i kind of like to create i i don't actually when I'm, when I'm going out to create a startup i don't think i'm gonna i don't go kind of tackle it from an angle of i'm gonna create a great product i'm obviously going to do that but i like to tackle it from these four perspectives um and then out of that plus the compound knowledge of how to build good products it kind of all kind of works together um so i'm going to kind of talk a little bit about the latest product that i'm doing which is called COVID comply in australia we've got these rules where you've got to scan QR codes or you basically got to give over your contact information every time you enter a, a particular venue. Um, and the staff have to do like health check questionnaires. Uh, it's, it's, it's very kind of um, quite complex from a privacy perspective. And in Australia, they put the entire onus on back on the businesses to make sure that they're collecting details. Um, so I saw a kind of gap in the market and I thought I could rapidly pull together a product and, and get it out to market and, and see if I could help a lot of people. So in here, I'm just going to be completely open and feel free to follow through with um, any of this in, in, the, um, in, in, the FA, in the FAQs afterwards. Um, I'm just going to go, go straight into like exactly what revenue I'm making, how my expenses are panning out, how the last four months have been. Um, someone, I went to a talk really early on in my entrepreneurial career, and someone that did this just completely opened up their business for the first time and it was really um, quite inspiring. So I thought I'd kind of start here. Oh, Apple is sending customers to my phone and computer. All right. Um, okay. So 
for for a thing like this, you kind of need a pretty big team. Um, but I have this permanent desire to know every in and out of my business. And so I'm obviously the developer. I do a lot of the design and I'm effectively carrying all of these roles from day one. Um, this is my preferred approach to, to starting new businesses that are like small, simple and, and have a really clear to market, uh, clear go to market strategy. Um, and so this is the problem. So this is what we're dealing with in Australia. Um, we've got like every state kind of runs like an independent country. They've got their own rules. And what we found was initially there was a lot of opportunistic dev agency, like web development agencies and things like that, that were just rushing out solutions temporarily whilst they were kind of had some downtime, um, pushing them out like projects where it's got an end date and not continually evolving these to meet like the changing state requirements and, and the more complexity, more complex customer needs. Um, so I decided to create a product called COVID Comply. It just simply, this is how it works. You scan the QR code, it presents a form like this, you fill it in and all of that's customizable. Um, you can just go to the website anytime, COVIDcomply.org, you can kind of explore how it works. Um, from a pricing model perspective, this is how I priced it. And this is all just context for what we're going through next. Um, I wanted to make it really simple um, because they don't want recurring payments. So it's like no recurring payments, one-time payment, less than $100, unlimited check-ins, no tiers or complex, you're out of cost. Um, and that's kind of how I approached it from a pricing perspective. So in terms of the revenue, this is what I've made in the last four months. I've made 46K rev. Um, and halfway through that, I changed the pricing from 12 months to six months. It was previously 12 months. Um, so the analyzed version of that revenue is about 76 grand. Um, so this is about four months worth of work. Um, so here's like a, a printout of, of my Stripe balance. So, so you can see I'm not, I'm not kind of messing you around. <laughs> this is like legit uh legitimate money so um and that's the analyzed revenue so in terms of how the expenses work um it's a really really cost effective business um if, if you're quite frugal with how you spend your money and the infrastructure you pick uh and, and the hosting providers that you provide it it can get um it can get really really cheap to start this to grow i hired people on upwork like people from the philippines on upwork um and to effectively scrape 10,000 email addresses uh, for, for restaurants across Melbourne. And, um, and that cost me about three grand to, to, get, it, to get that launched. Um, the conversion rate was absolutely miserable. I converted like 120 customers. Um, <laughs> so it definitely did not break even. Um, but since then, I tried about 300 bucks on, on Facebook and I just couldn't get it right. And I got all these people saying how this service should be free. And I'm like, well, I don't know. Sure. <laughs> the government should provide it if it's free, but I've got, I've got expenses to cover. Um, and so it's all been word of mouth. So I focused purely on making the product as seamless as possible to get them uh, to, to onboard someone uh, and to and get it in straight into their business as, as fast as possible. Um, and through that advocacy carried the business. Um, I've just tried, uh, I've just spent a large amount of money on PR service. I, nothing's happened from that. So I don't know if I'll do it again, but I'll see. So this is what it kind of cost me to, to run um, in terms of the servers. So I'm processing an enormous amount of data, but it's quite cost effective. So this is a tool called Heroku, um, which is like a layer on top of AWS. It, it's a platform as a service. It manages a whole bunch of stuff for you. One of the key takeaways of, of this, um, I guess is, um, keep your pricing model. I, I recommend keeping your pricing model as simple as possible. People hate subscriptions. They're really dangerous. Um, and equally, when it comes to like infrastructure and all the applications you need to, everything you need to run your, run your, run your product, um, try and not overcomplicate it by going directly to AWS or Google or something like that. Try and get a fully managed service. It'll cost you more, but it doesn't cost too much as you can see, but it takes care of like security and privacy and all that kind of stuff. It's the only way I can have my like face on every single role in the company is because every single role is quite light to manage. Um, so I lean really, really heavily on, on technology and I pay, pay the price for it. Um, but consequently my, my overall kind of team costs are low. 
Um, so to date, we've had 512,000 scans of the QR code in the last four months. Um, so the growth kind of looks like a little bit like that. Um, interestingly, like I've only got 322 paying customers in four months. Um, so the word of mouth has gone, uh, is, is, it's, it's not like a massive growth business. You, like, it sounds like these big numbers are, are great, but it's, um, it really just comes down to increasing average revenue per customer. So I charge per location instead of per customer. Um, and now I'm starting to target customers with, um, customers with more, uh, with more locations uh, proactively uh, where possible um, with all of my um, SEO and, and how I'm kind of structuring the, the, the homepage. Um, and consequently, it seems to be working quite well. Um, this is probably where we start getting a little more deep into product. So I am on the 191st release of the product in the last four months. I build tiny tweaks and then I get it out to market as soon as possible. Even if it's like I'm just uploading a new logo onto the homepage because I've got a new big customer, I'm getting that out as soon as possible. So 191 versions in 124 days is a lot. <laughs> but that is effectively how I've been able to maintain, uh, maintain the consistent growth of this business from day one. Um, every time a customer asks me for a feature, I immediately drop tools and build it for them as fast as possible. And usually it's a 24 to 48 hour turnaround and they become the strongest advocates of the product ever. And it usually starts from them reaching out and being like, this feature that you have is really bad. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, cool. Um, tell me how we can make it really good <laughs> and bring them in as part of the process. Um, but the important thing is just shipping new versions of your code as fast as possible. So Heroku does a lot of the automation for that for you. Um, and so from day one, any business that I create, if it's ever going to have to be in release cycles, it'll be weekly or anything like that. I completely question it um, and, until I can restructure to the point where I want to be shipping up to 10 versions a day um, to constantly gain market, market, uh, constantly gain ground on, on the market segment. So, um, oh yeah, that's a screenshot of my Heroku. So yeah, I'm September, I shipped three versions of the site um, pretty much quickly. Those were like minor text changes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm shipping almost every second day and usually multiple times a day. So we've got 322 paying customers to date. Um, one of the kind of key things um, that I, I, is a little bit unique about my approach is how I manage customer care. So here's an example of like the ridiculousness that you get when you open online chat um, directly via your homepage. And um, I allow people to chat anonymously. Um, but my position with my customers is nothing should be free. I'm, I'm deeply, I'm a, I'm a capitalist at heart. I, if, if you're getting value from mm. it, you should pay for it. Yeah, um, yeah but my position is yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be very brutally honest with my customers and, and convert them around. Um, and usually it works really well. Um, so for example, this is a customer that reached out, um, that reached out and said, oh, I think you, this feature and this feature and this feature is really, really bad. And so now I chatted with them and I, and I said, okay, I'll give you an update when I like, when I, when I pull them around. Um, and then I was just constantly shipping new versions specifically for this customer. And then like responding to them, telling them when I'm going to release the new version, um, how it's going to work. And then I turn them into massive advocates and they just grow my business for me. Um, here's another example that anytime I find, I have error tra tracking everywhere throughout the product. Um, and, Tracking errors and and um, and communicating with your customers about them has become for me an, an incredibly successful sales tool and customer advocacy tool. Um, so I order as soon as I see a customer have an error, I reach out to them. I tell them I've sorted the error. I tell them I fixed it. And I reach out to again. I tell them I fixed it. Um, and that positive experience turns them into a huge, huge advocate for my product. Um, oh, this is an example of how. Um, this is another person who's like every other, she goes, she, she was telling me that every other um, solution out there had this. So I assumed yours had it as well. Um, and so I brought her in as part of it by saying, basically, how, how do you think it should work? Let's build this together. Um, and now, and now she's consequently, she's kind of pushed it into a whole bunch of her, 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 um, her network as well. And, um, and she feels part of the journey. 
So if anyone has any questions, you can contact any of the team at any time.